Okay, well it just clicked over to 423. So it's 423 on 423. I'm in Columbia again. I'm standing out in front of the Columbia Police Department. <laughs> Been there before, long time ago. Young man, um, not going to tell you what that was about. You have to find that out for yourselves. It was uh, nothing too serious, but enough that they wanted to talk to me. And so I had to come back from St. Louis to Columbia to talk to them about what it was that I had done wrong. Um, I was not blameless, and I freely admitted what my, what my part in that was. And uh, nothing ever came of it. Nothing ever came of it. A good scare came of it. And it, and, and, and it woke me up to some things that I needed to be awakened to. And, you know, God uses pain as discipline. Um, today, currently, I am not in jail. And I am free to walk about because I am blameless. And that's what G423 means. Blameless. Cannot be apprehended. Um, I love the fact that today I'm blameless. I haven't done anything that warrants being picked up. And I have no intention of doing anything that warrants being picked up. I did have my freedom of, uh, my constitutional freedom removed from me by a judge during a divorce proceeding. But he acted based on some information that he thought was true, but was not. And uh, I was taken into a psych ward and taken a look at. They wanted to know if I was... Uh, psychologically sound, whether or not I had uh, religious leanings that were, you know, off the charts. I was there for 24 hours and the doctors let me out. They had me for five days. Uh, that event, while it was certainly scary and troublesome, provided for me one of the best parts of my testimony, which is a statement from the state of Missouri declaring that I have no mental illness. So when I talk about my daughter's drawings, when I talk about my testimony, it's coming from a man who's been studied by the state of Missouri and found to have no mental illness, needing no treatment, needing no medication. I've already been accused of being crazy. It didn't fly. And I now have a certificate from the state of Missouri saying exactly that. And they looked at my daughter's drawings, the drawings of the rapture that she did when she was five that she could not have possibly gotten from any other source and that she flat out said came from God. Well, you know what? That's what the Bible says in Joel 2.28. It says he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. His sons and daughters will prophesy. Well, the, my little girl was talking about something she could not possibly have any clue about. That's how God works. He hides a matter. He hides it in little children. He hides it in no, uh, numerical signs. License plates have been my thing lately. And he reveals his hand to his prophets. Surely the Lord does nothing without first revealing it through his prophets. So what's going to happen? Do I know what's going to happen on the 22nd of May? Am I absolutely certain that a tornado is going to strike a town in the northeast corner of Missouri? No, I'm not. But I have a lot of feelings on the matter, a lot of information, a lot of tie-ins between 522 and Joplin, 522 and James uh, jo Jeff James and Jeff James's grandmother, Jane James, and all these storms that entered into a person's life, and then a certain amount of information coming from Hollywood through their predictive programming machine. There's a lot going on, and we just simply have to take what's available to us and ask ourselves, is it leading somewhere? You know, 522, if the skies go green and you're in northeast Missouri, you might want to take heart to what I'm saying. If the skies go green, I believe they will. I, I think that this is coming. And so, I'm, you know, I've been speaking about it. Uh, I know the name of God is Ayah. That's guaranteed. That's, it. That's written in Scripture. That's plain as day. Easy to see, a simple truth. But if you can't grasp that, you aren't going to understand anything that I have to say. So first, let's deal with the ability of people to understand simple Scripture. They're the ones God's talking to. The wise virgins need to know how to enter into the wedding supper. The unwise don't go in, and they ask, you know, why, you know, why, why, why aren't we going in? Don't you know us? And and uh, the bridegroom answers them and says, Why didn't you come when I called? The call is going out. 
we're, we're wrapping this up. Jesus is coming, and he is going to take what is his. The bride and the bridegroom's voice shall no longer be heard. That's spoken of in Old Testament and New Testament. What is that? That's the, the loving, believing church of Christ, church of Messiah, that will be gone. We're the bride. The bridegroom, that's the Messiah, and the Messiah's voice, the Holy Spirit. That'll be gone. And then you will experience a famine of the word. Not a famine of food, but of the word of God. And you're going to have lie upon lie upon lie to believe. None of it will be true. I'm glad I'm free to walk around today. I intend on staying that way. I have no intention of breaking any laws. And I know that I'm not crazy, so no one's going to come lock me up for what I say. And I have a right to free speech in this country. And there's a lot of things that the Constitution provides. And I'm going to use all of those within the law to send out the message that I need to send. God bless and take care. It's time to start looking at the Word of God and studying to show yourself approved. Be blameless when you go forward with this message so that you will, believe, will be believed. God bless and take care. Bye.